Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in today. I wanted to share a story with you about a one-on-one -on -one client that I've been working with for just about one month. And two weeks into us working together, she started noticing really great benefits in her walking. But I wanted to share with you what those benefits are, what exercise routine she's doing to get those benefits, and also a surprising observation that at first glance appears to be a negative side effect of her exercise routine. But in reality, it's actually a sign that she's continuing to improve. But this is something that a lot of people observe with their exercise routine, and they assume they're doing the wrong exercises or it's not helping. And and they change their course of action and that's the opposite of what you actually want to be doing so we're going to go into each of those categories let's first talk about my clients improvements so again as i mentioned we've been working together for about two weeks at this point and let me actually back up for a second so the way that i work with my one-on-one -on -one clients is we meet on zoom and the very first thing we do is we review symptoms and goals and the goals are the most important thing that I want to hear, because regardless of what your symptoms are, if I know what your goals are, I am way better able to help design a program for you to meet those goals. So the goals is number one. And then we focus on what symptoms are preventing you from reaching those goals. So we take both of those into consideration. And from that information, together, we develop an exercise routine that's doable for that client. And typically what that looks like is I am suggesting the exercises, but I'm asking questions like, how many minutes a day do you want to be able to exercise? Or how many minutes do you have to exercise? Do you prefer to exercise all at once or in small chunks throughout the day? Do you want this same exercise program every day? Or do you want two different exercise programs, maybe one program for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then a different program for Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday? So it's fine tuned for every client I work with based on their personality, their likes or dislikes, what they are looking for, and most importantly, what is realistic for them. So with this one-on-one -on -one client that I'm currently working with, we developed an exercise program. I'll share that with you in a second. But truly within two weeks, we had our first session. It was one hour long. Two weeks later, because we meet every two weeks on Zoom, we check in with each other. And my first question is always, how did it go? Have you noticed any improvements or not? How are the exercises? Are they easy, moderate, or challenging? And we'll tweak the program from there. And this client in particular was so happy. She was smiling from ear to ear and just so excited at the improvements that she saw just in these two weeks. And the specific improvement that she was most excited about was improving her walking in many ways, her endurance, her speed, and her safety. So in two weeks, well, actually, before I tell you the good stuff, let me tell you where she started two weeks prior. She had a personal goal of walking 2,000 steps within her home without a mobility aid every single day. And this was something that she was doing prior to working with me. And prior to working with me, this took her about five hours. And it included rest time. So she would walk as much as she could, then she would sit and rest. And then maybe she would eat a meal and then she'd walk some more and then sit and rest as maybe watching TV or reading a book and then she'd walk more. And so she rested for as long as she needed and then she got back up and moved. So in total, prior to working together, this took her five hours to walk 2000 steps in her home. And the reason that it took so long is because she was only able to walk about 100 steps at a time before stopping. And not only that, she was tripping 20 to 30 times within those five hours, within those 2000 steps. That is a high risk of injury because even though it was just a trip, she could have fallen and if she did, she could have injured herself. So we developed this exercise routine for her she was doing it consistently for two weeks and at the two week mark, what she was so excited about is that those 2000 steps in her home, instead of taking five hours, it was taking two to two and a half hours, which is 
half the time. Insane, such an amazing improvement. Not only that, instead of walking only 100 steps before getting fatigued and having to rest, she can now walk 500 to 600 steps before resting. So that's even more than double. What would that be? Quadruple? More than that. And instead of tripping 20 to 30 times for the 2,000 steps, she only tripped three to five times. Is that not insane? I was so excited for her because clearly what that shows us is that the exercises routine that she's doing is working and she's staying consistent enough to reap those benefits. So I want to share with you what her exercise routine looks like and why she is seeing these improvements because everyone with MS is different. So you might not get these same benefits or you might see even greater benefits or anywhere in between. So this client's program first consists of cardio, three to five minutes of cardio before her exercise routine. Then she has seven strengthening exercises, and these are a combination of standing exercises and sitting exercises. The strengthening exercises focus on her hip, knee and ankle strength. She then does three balance exercises and two stretches for her legs. And in total, that, that routine that I just mentioned takes her about 45 minutes and it includes rest breaks. It's not just start to finish without resting at all. So with rest breaks, takes her about 45 minutes. She is doing that routine one to two times per day and more times than not, it's two times per day, but it depends on her energy levels and also the availability that she has that day. And what I think is extremely important to point out is that the reason she's noticing benefits from this routine is not only the exercises are clearly focused on her primary areas of weakness, but also she's consistent. She is exercising within these exercises for about 45 minutes, one to two times per day, six days per week. Now that is a lot of exercise and she was exercising prior to working with me, which put her at a good baseline, but they were not the exercises that she should have been doing. They weren't targeting her main areas of weakness. So being consistent, being that consistent at something, you are way more likely to see improvements faster. And also I should say too, that when she's doing these exercises, we're switching up the order. Cardio is always first, but after cardio, it's not always the seven strengthening exercises right in a row, followed by the three balance exercises, followed by the two stretches. On Monday, she might do a few of the strengthening exercises and then balance exercises, and then a few more strengthening and then a stretch and then finishing the balance. Whereas on Tuesday, she might actually start with the balance exercises and the strengthening exercises are in a different order. It's really important to not do your exercise routine in the same order every single time. Your brain gets used to that. We want to keep it exciting. We want to switch it up so that you can use those muscles at any time, not just when you're expecting it to come next. So, Two reasons so far of why she's seeing these results. Number one, it's the exercises targeted for her specific areas of weakness. Number two, she's staying extremely consistent. And number three is that when you see improvements this soon, one likely reason for that, in addition to the proper exercises and consistency, is that your neural pathways, the pathways from your brain all the way down to every single muscle that we have in our body, they are there and they're working. They were just sleeping. I, I like to think of neuroplasticity in this sense of your neural pathways that were just really hard to use were just sleeping and you were using other neural pathways instead that were stronger. And so essentially, these neural pathways that should have been working were not working, not necessarily due to demyelination, but because they were weaker, your body, your brain, your spine, your neural pathways found a different way that made it easier. It's kind of like if you were climbing a mountain, would you prefer to climb really treacherous, rocky, slippery rocks up to the top or a nice grassy, 
groomed path for you. I'm pretty sure everyone except daredevils out there would probably choose the grassy, smooth trail compared to the dangerous, rocky trail. Our body works in the same way. If our body finds a neural pathway that's easier and quicker and smoother and less fatiguing, it's going to use that over and over and over again. And that can be okay, but where it becomes dangerous is you start using that over and over and over again, and it gets even stronger, but that initial neural pathway gets weaker and weaker. And eventually this rerouting that you've done with a neural pathway that was already there and working, it will get fatigued. And when it does, you will have zero backup supply of strength. Your backup neural pathway won't be working at all because you haven't used it in years. So it's really important to utilize those neural pathways that we do have, even if the movement is more challenging. I kind of got off on a tangent there, but basically my point was in with this specific client, it was clear that her neural pathways were there. She just wasn't using them. And that is very different from someone whose neural pathways have been so demyelinated that their brain actually does need to reroute. They do need to find a new pathway. That takes much longer. If that is you, you would likely not see the, these results that this client is seeing because it can take a few weeks, a few months, a few years before actually creating those new neural pathways. So for this client in particular, it was her exercise routine that was key. It was her consistency. And it was the fact that her neural pathways were there. We just had to wake them up. They weren't working in the way that they should have. So that leads me to the surprising observation. So she's feeling super optimistic at the two week mark. We keep the exercises mostly the same, a few tweaks here and there for the next two weeks. And we meet together at the one month mark, which was last week. And it was so interesting because she was still excited. She was still seeing the benefits of improved walking speed, improved endurance. She wasn't tripping as much. So all of those are true. Not only that, she also said that she's seeing improved strength in bending her knee. That movement is getting easier for her. She's able to lift her leg more and her foot drop is even a little bit less. So all of these perks are so amazing, especially considering it's only been one month. However, she was really bummed because she noticed that while her balance is improving, but not as quickly as her strength, her hip is dropping. So as she's walking, one hip drops and it throws her a little bit off balance. And she's noticing that this is happening more and more, almost as if while her strength is improving, her hip drop is getting even worse. And this is where a lot of my clients eventually stumble into where something is happening and it wasn't happening before. Oh my gosh, am I doing the wrong exercises? Am I doing something wrong? And the majority of the time you're not doing anything wrong. And it's actually a good sign that you're noticing these other areas of weakness. And the reason for that is because as you get stronger, you're ideally using your muscles in a brand new way. And when you use your muscles in a brand new way, you will uncover other areas of weakness with this client in particular, initially prior to working together, she was the type of walker where she was kind of scuffing the ground with each step. She had foot slap. And when you're walking in that way, you're not really bending your knee a whole lot. You're bending it minimally just enough to bring your leg forward. And it doesn't require as much balance. But now that she has better knee bending, better leg lifting, better ankle dorsiflexion, now she's actually taking a full step forward. She's lifting her leg up more with every step now. And when you lift your leg up more, it requires more balance. And that is when you'll see hip drop. That is when you'll notice those difficulties and impairments in the hip and balance. So 
what I explained to her is that, well, two things. One, this is actually a good sign. I always hope to uncover new areas of weakness as we're working together. And number two, it doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. If anything, it just shows us where we now need to prioritize. So our plan moving forward is that she's going to continue doing the same exercises. We'll tweak them every now and then if they're getting to be too easy or too challenging but we are also going to add exercises for hip drop. So it's not a bad sign if you're running into new symptoms that you didn't notice before. It's okay if that's happening. We just now need to address it and make sure that we have exercises specifically for that. I hope you found my client's story inspiring and hopefully you'll stay a bit more consistent with your exercise routine, knowing what the possible benefits are. And as I mentioned earlier, every person with MS is different. So while this client saw improvements in two weeks, you may or may not see the same type of improvements if you have the specific routine for you and if you are extremely consistent. But just know that it is possible. I plan on having this specific client that I'm referring to on the podcast for an interview when we're done working together because I know she's just going to see even more improvements. So you'll get to hear her full story at some point in the near future. But for now, I hope this little glimpse into our work together can help inspire you to stay at it. You've got this. Just stay consistent, stay the path, and keep listening to your body. And if you really don't know what exercises you should be doing for things like bending your knee, not tripping as much, climbing stairs, walking on even and uneven surfaces, that's okay. I've outlined all of the MS specific exercises that you should be doing for those things and more. And you can find those in my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link. I'll put a link down in the show notes where you can get more information.